happy little games. Whether you were a connoisseur of arcades in the early 1980s or just a young, dumb, and full of gum sawed off little peckerwood like Pat Me and QC, chances are you encounter track and field. Literally every arcade I went to back in the day had this game, whether it was the cocktail style or the standard upright. As soon as you stepped into the arcade, you could hear the familiar clackety clack clack of the buttons rapidly being pressed. Konami had a massive hit on their hands and they knew it following up the game with various other spin-offs and updates including Hypersports, Konami 88 and <laughs> distance 7.73 meters track and field 2 for the NES among others today we are going to take a look at another Konami track and field spinoff that offered a unique take on the gameplay and similar to the original track and field was a whole lot of fun to play. The name of the game is Combat School or Boot Camp depending on what area of the world you live in. This military themed game would see you compete in a number of different challenges as you attempt to complete basic training in hopes of embarking on a secret military mission. That's the fact, Jack! That's the fact, Jack! What other Konami game has a brief cameo in this game? So drop down and give me 20. This is the history of Combat School. In early 1986, Konami were still raking in the dough from both track and field and its follow-up hypersports. Designer Akira Watanahi wanted to keep that sweet, sweet cash flowing in, so he was trying to come up with an idea for another track and field style game. As I've mentioned in previous videos, Japanese developers were heavily influenced by popular American cinema at the time and not just the action flicks either. Mr. Watanihi saw the Bill Murray hit comedy Stripes which saw a couple of unlikely recruits join the army and attempt to make it through basic training and have to endure a top secret mission at the end. Mr. Watanahi felt that this would be perfect for a track and field style game and would actually be the first military basic training video game of its kind. Deciding upon the events was a bit of a challenge. Mr. Watanahi wanted to properly represent the obstacles that each new member of the army would face all the while retaining the fun and competitive gameplay of track and field wall climbing and monkey bars would be a given, as would running an Iron Man course. A shooting gallery type would have to be in as well along with some one-on-one -on -one combat. Initially, Mr. Watanahi did not know what the last level would be which is why it's shown as a question mark on the progress screen. It wasn't decided on until almost three-fourths of the way through development. Due to limited ROM size, we are given three different firing ranges. After the graduating ceremonies while the text scrolls on the screen giving you your mission, the same siren sound effect is used which was first heard in Green Beret. Don't be a chicken. Yes sir. There were a couple of differences between Combat School and Boot Camp. Apparently, Combat School used the joystick in conjunction with buttons while Boot Camp used the trackball in place of the joystick. 
I couldn't find any images of a combat school cabinet, but I did locate the original operator's manual, and there are schematics for using a joystick instead of a trackball. When playing the Japanese trackball version, another change comes with the voices, with all of them being in Japanese despite this taking place on a U.S. military base. Yoi! Ute! 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 I was able to locate a video of a generic Japanese cabinet that had this game on display, so at least you can see how the game is played with a trackball. This game continued the military themed list of titles released by Konami during this time frame, which also included Contra, Jackal, Green Beret, and Devastators. Those sneaky little poops at Konami have once again ripped off an image for use in one of their games. The soldier on the flyer looks very similar to Tom Cruise from the movie Taps. Combat School was released in late 1987 by Konami. As the story goes, you take on the role of new recruits Nick and Joe as you attempt to climb, jump, swim, punch, and kick all the way to the very end hoping to have what it takes to become a member of the U.S. military. This is a one or two player affair in which player one assumes the role of Nick and player two assumes the role of Joe. Regardless of whether there are one or two human beings playing, there will always be two players on the screen at the same time with the other one being controlled by the CPU. The controls are fairly simple with you using either a trackball or joystick for movement. Each player has two buttons with various uses depending on the game. You have one for running and shooting and the other one for jumping and shooting. Along with the varied minigames is the drill sergeant who is a real stickler so you better have your big boy pants on because he has no problem telling you to go home to your mother. Go home to your mother. You looking for a fight? There are quite a few voice samples in the game which adds to the overall experience. In between certain minigames, a couple of different cutscenes are shown including one of you and your compadre sitting around and having a smoke break. There is nothing better than getting into the best shape of your life thanks to the U.S. military, all the while filling your lungs with that oh-so-sweet nicotine. There are seven mini-games to make it through, as well as a top-secret mission once you complete basic training. The first one you encounter is the obstacle course, in which you have to run as fast as you can, jumping and climbing over walls until you reach the monkey bars. It is possible to knock your opponent off the bars during this event. You made it, Nick. Yeah. The second one is a firing range in which you use a free roaming cursor to take out as many of the targets as you can before time runs out in order to make it to the next level. Fire! 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 Fire. Level 3 is the Iron Man course, which is a top-down view where you have to run and jump avoiding the various obstacles such as puddles and rocks. You also have to take a nice canoe ride trying to avoid the logs which will knock you out of your boat. You can swim though, so it's okay. Similar to the monkey bars, you can knock your opponent out of their canoe as well. Level 4 is another firing range in which you control your character who moves along the bottom of the screen shooting all of the moving targets. The faster you clear them, the quicker the next wave will come.
Level 5 sees you partake in a little man-on-man arm wrestling contest to determine who is the strongest. This is button mashing at its finest, but thankfully there is no penalty for losing, but the winner does get a massive point bonus. By the way, the noises Joe and Nick make during the segment are both beefy and queefy. Level 6 is the final shooting gallery with the third one having you shoot targets, but you do not have a free roaming cursor. There are also drill instructor targets that if you hit will briefly stop you. This one definitely takes a little getting used to. Up until level 6, if on any of the previous levels you came close enough to qualify but didn't have the intestinal fortitude to do so, you are given the chin up challenge. This is more button mashing but it's pretty easy to complete. Level 7 sees you have to face off with your drill instructor. This minigame has a definite Yi-Yar Kung Fu feel to it and the best strategy i found is to jump around as much as you can. Stick and move is your best bet. Aside from the jump button, you only have one attack button, which is a bit annoying. Be warned, there is no second chance chin-up challenge available, so if you fail, it's over. If you manage to defeat the drill instructor, congratulations! You pass basic training and get to partake in the graduation ceremony and throw your hat in the air like a rich Texan on a Saturday night. Congratulations on your graduation! If you are playing the game in two-player mode and both players advance all the way to the end, another arm wrestling contest takes place because only one player gets to go to the final secret mission. Just when you thought it was safe to take a breath, a super friend's trouble alert notifies you that terrorists have taken over and that you must save the hostages. This is where the game gets insanely difficult. Despite spending all that time on the firing range, you are only allowed to use kicks when it comes to taking care of the enemies. And these enemies are out for blood. One hit from the enemies and it's curtains for you. Despite your limited arsenal of attacks, the enemies have knives, Molotov cocktails, and the dreaded finger poke of doom because one touch from the enemies and you will die. Oddly enough, a thrown knife will deplete your health bar by half but it won't kill you. You will have to shimmy along water pipes until you finally reach the boss of the game who looks a lot like Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. You do have a life bar here but he is no pushover. After you defeat the boss, you rescue the hostage and take him outside. At this point, the game is over. Get lost. Get lost. Help me! You made it! I have always enjoyed track and field style games and this one is a winner. 
The graphics are large and detailed with smooth animation to boot. The sound effects and music are really good with lots of different voice samples peppered throughout the game. The secret level is a bit annoying because you are thrust into it with virtually no warning and also no mention of what the controls are. I have never seen a boot camp or combat school arcade unit as I was first introduced to this game on the Commodore 64. Speaking of, let's check out the conversions. They were handled by conversion extraordinaire Ocean Software and quite honestly, each one is pretty good. Even the sound effects and music on the weaker systems are not too bad and not queef nasty as you would expect. The first one we are looking at is the Spectrum version. This one has something even the arcade doesn't, which is parallax scrolling, and it looks great. The graphics feature large detailed sprites and with very little color clash. The character portraits in between each level are a bit odd, as Joe and Nick look like they've been attacked by Nosferatu and had their blood drained from their body. The 128K version features music while you play and it sounds pretty good. Trackball support is not included so you have to waggle your joystick as fast as you can. This is consistent across all the conversions. This only has text for the cutscenes but otherwise everything else is here. It's an excellent conversion for the humble little specky. The Amstrad version is up next and thankfully it's not just a Spectrum port. The sprites are large and detailed with excellent use of color all throughout. The only fault I could find with this version is that while it retains the speed of the arcade original it is a bit choppy and I wish it could have been just a bit smoother. With that being said, we do get music while we play, so at least we don't have to sit in our bedrooms in complete silence while we waggle our stick. I'm getting flashbacks to when I was 13 years old. The game controls great and is an excellent representation of the arcade game. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next and it is superb. When booting up the game, the first thing you'll experience is getting blasted in the face by the excellent music from Martin Galway. Graphics are detailed, although the colors are a bit murky, it doesn't detract from the overall gameplay experience. The speed of the game is not only fast, but smooth like butter, and the controls are fantastic. Some of the collision detection at points can be a bit wonky, but overall, this is an awesome conversion for my favorite breadmen. And last, but certainly not least, is the MS-DOS version. Try as I may, and try as I might, I could not find a version of Combat School for MS-DOS. However, I did find Boot Camp, so apparently it was only released in the States and not in Europe. 
this was also done by a different developer by the name of Banana Development, who had done a number of arcade conversions including Contra, Renegade, and Ajax, among others. The graphics are not too terribly bad, but the problem comes with the choppy, choppy scrolling. After a couple of rounds, you do eventually get used to it and can go back to enjoying the game. This game features all of the cutscenes, including the graduation sequence, but oddly enough, omits the full ending. Thankfully, there is no queefy PC speaker, but instead we get pretty good ad-lib sound card support. The controls are the same, waggle waggle, as found in other conversions and it plays really good. This turned out pretty well for a 35 year old MS-DOS game. Combat School, or Boot Camp as I always knew it, is one of my favorite track and field ripoffs. I don't know if it should be considered a ripoff or not because Konami created both titles, but either way, the game is a lot of fun and the multiplayer mode is just the icing on the cake. If you love track and field style games and don't mind breaking a joystick or two, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did, soldier. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.